as you were going down that road of researching and, and really becoming passionate about, hey, this is something that I think I could do for a living. What, what's that conversation like with your family? Because it sounds like you had a, a fairly constru- uh, constructive, a, a fairly successful construction business that you're running, you're, you're paying the bills. So, so how did that conversation go as you were looking to make that transition? Well, it was interesting because I was really good at what I did. And I, there was a sense of satisfaction in getting to do something with your hands. And then you would see the final product and you could actually have a visual representation of what you did. And we could drive down a neighborhood and I could point to a house or I could point to this and say, I did that, I did this. And so that was nice, but I never wanted to be in construction. That was never my goal. It was never my dream. It was a means to an end. And everybody in my family and even myself, we knew that. I just didn't know what else I could be doing. And I didn't have a lot of skills. I graduated high school and that was about the extent of my education. I've actually seen, not to you know put the cart before the horse, but I've actually seen so many similarities between what I dealt with in construction when it comes to general contractors and dealing with homeowners and that kind of thing to the relation of dealing with publishers and dealing with independent authors and that situation and how the politics and dynamics of the two were so incredibly aligned. I was just blown away. And I had so many tools that I felt had given me an advantage in the fact that I knew a lot about how to navigate those types of things in the industry coming into audiobooks, then. than a lot of people coming into uh, what we what we now know as like narration and, and voiceover. So for me, it was actually kind of funny because I was curious about this and I wanted to know how I would do with it. So I actually very quietly, not letting anybody know, went into my walk-in closet where I had lots of clothes and I had my, I was using GarageBand on my iPhone and had my little earbuds in and I was recording the first chapter of a book and then trying to edit it to make sure that I had it sounding decent, fixing all the mistakes and everything. And then I took that little first chapter and I sent it to a few people that I knew listened to audiobooks that were friends of mine. And I said, okay, I need you to listen to this and tell me if you think that it's, if it's halfway decent, please, please be honest with me. And the response I got was very, very emphatically, wow, this is amazing. This is great. I would totally listen to this. And so then that was when it took me after that, it took me about three months before then I was like, okay, I have to show my wife. And my wife is a very practical person. She is the one that keeps me grounded. And whenever I'm like, hey, I think this would be, no. <laughs> yeah, but we could, no. So I knew that, that was, this was going to be the ultimate test. This was the big one. And so she, I knew from my love of audiobooks and her absolute, I do not want to listen to audiobooks at all, that I was going to have to try and work this very carefully. So I said, okay, I need you to just listen to me, hear me out for a little bit and tell me if this is going to be something that you think is okay, but wait for your response. Don't just immediately give a response. I want you to think about this. So I said, here's a few, here's some samples of some audiobooks. And I wanted her to listen to some people that I thought were amazing and really good. And some that were, I didn't think were great, but were still popular. And so I sent that, I, I let her listen to some of those and I says, okay. Now I want you to listen to this. And I let her listen to what I had recorded. And my heart is going boom, 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 out of my chest, fear and panic, because this is, the, this is the thing, right? I mean, we can dream all the live long day about, oh, I'd be able to do this, or I'd make a great lawyer, I'd be an excellent doctor, blah, blah, blah. But when the rubber meets the road and you actually put yourself forward, that's when you find out whether someone's going to be honest and say, it's not in your wheelhouse. This is not what you're capable of doing. And I knew, I knew from past experience that my wife would be very honest with me about that. And so I let her listen to it and she sat there nodding for a minute. And then she looked over at me and she said, you could do this. And my, I was like, oh my gosh. And it still, it still makes me feel emotional even now because it was that validation because I knew, and that's the beauty of having a wife who doesn't just cater to you or pander to your hopes and dreams Mm. that you know when she says you could do this that you could do this it's like it's so empowering and so I was like okay and that was what started me on the journey of going okay I need to really start doing some hardcore research understanding what's going on looking at coaching looking at what kind of uh uh equipment I needed how much I needed to, to invest in order to get this off the ground And when I was like, okay, and I had it all laid out and I presented it to my wife, this is what I think we need. And she said, okay, but you're not paying for it with this. You got to sell some of your other hobbies and ideas and things that you've 
you've said, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to start playing guitar, and I'm going to buy and sell some of those things that you haven't used in a year, two years, five years, then take that money and buy the equipment with it. So that's what I did and, uh, and got my microphone, got my interface, got everything set up, and then started talking with people like Don Barnes and, uh, and Sean Pratt, who were my first two coaches on two very different aspects of the industry, engineering and performance. 